All right, so welcome to our tips number 13. And this is one of the coolest tidyverse features, which is making maps with ggplot. So we're gonna be going over how to make these amazing maps that you can really do a lot of cool stuff with. These make great visuals for publications. They make great visuals for reports. So you're gonna be focusing on learning ggplot and also working with map data, which has a coordinate system usually identified by a latitude and longitude. So we're going to show you how to make this map here, uh, which is for voting Republican in 1976. And you can see which states voted Democrat versus Republican. And I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing that you want to do, if you haven't done so already, sign up for the weekly R tips. That'll give you access to the, um, the, the GitHub repo then what you'll do is you'll do a git pull and this will give you all of the code um, so when you set that repo up you're going to have a new 013 ggplot2 maps and these are all of the r tips in here we're going to go in here we're going to open up this file 013 ggplot2 maps.r and that's going to open up this file here um, so that will be what you need to do just sign up for the r tips newsletter and you'll get access to it Okay, next thing, we're going to load in some libraries. So the first one is the Tidyverse. We're going to load the Maps Library and the Map Projection Library. Tidyverse is what we're going to be teaching, uh, and that comes with ggplot2. And then you also will need to have Maps, which accesses the map data that we're going to be uh, needing to create what's called the chloropleth. So if I check out this plot over here, it makes all of these map states and, and everything, and then map projection, and that's needed for... Uh, to make sure that the projection looks correct. You see how this kind of has a curve to it? That is because we're using a coordinate system and a projection of that coordinate system. Okay, first things first, let's check out map data. So this is uh, one of the key functions that you're gonna need to become familiar with. It comes from ggplot2. And what this does is it allows us to access different map data sets. And what it does is it pulls in some latitudes and longitudes, and you can find out more information about the function here. What we're going to be using it for first is creating a world map. So I'm going to show you how to make a world map first. It's just a basic map of the world using the map data function. We're also going to be using ggplot to visualize this data that we that we pull in. So ggplot is an amazingly powerful tool. It's a skill that I cover in depth in DS4B101-R. That's my foundational R course. In, in week four of that course, you learn a ton about ggplot2. I think I go through about four and a half hours of video content just on ggplot2. Um, so you want to learn that, and that's going to be able to really um, help you with your skill set. So we're going to first load in some data. I'm going to use this map data, and I'm just going to add a region called world, and that's going to pull in all of the data for the entire world. Um, and then we can view that data set and we see it's nine, 99,000 by th uh, 99,338 rows by six columns. And you can see it's got the latitude and the longitude. It's also got groups in here and uh, they're grouped by region and, and so on and subregion. Okay. Um, the next thing is that we want to be able to plot that. So we take our data set and we pipe it into ggplot just like normal. And um, this creates a blank canvas over here. And then we're going to use this geom map, which creates a geometry for a map. Now we're going to pr provide an AES, which is a mapping. So we're going to map the latitude and longitude. So longitude is going to be along the X axis, latitude on the Y. And then you have to add a map ID for the geom map to function properly. And we're going to provide it this region right here. So that's kind of like a group. Um, we also have a map and this is new, um, a, uh, an actual argument in GeoMap called map. And again, we're going to provide it the world tibble, which has the data set in here. Okay. Um, and then these are just a few aesthetic arguments uh, to control what the map looks like. So I'm going to call this world base and then we'll visualize it. Okay. So this is what the map looks like. Now it looks a little weird because you can see that there's no projection to it. So right now, um, there's no curve to it, like the globe the of the world has a curve to it. So we need to add something else to it in order to make this look right. So if you're going to be putting this in a report, don't put it in a report looking like this. What you want to do is you want to take that world base and add a coordinate system. And what we're going to be doing is using the orthogonal coordinate system. And then I'm going to provide it an orientation. And this is going to be 
the um, uh, again a coordinate system where this is the latitude the longitude and then um, that this is going to focus on the uh, US so when I run this now I take that world base and now it looks like a world and I can focus in on different parts of the world and then I can apply my data set accordingly okay but Typically what we want to do is we don't just want to focus on the entire world. We usually want to look at a subset of the world. So what we're going to be doing is then showing how you can use this map data function to focus in on the United States. Again, we're going to be um, covering ggplot here, and this is going to be doing basically what we did already for the world, but just for the state at the U.S. state level. And, um, and if you want to learn ggplot in detail, I cover it in my 101 course. Okay. So, uh, what we're doing again here is using map data, but this time focusing on the states and this USA tibble is what we save it as. And this has again, the latitude and longitude, and you can see it's got the region in here and the group. And we can see that there's a tibble here of now 15,537 by six. So it's, it's a lot smaller than the world tibble. Uh, we're going to go through the same process. Uh, this time I moved the latitude and longitude in the map ID up to the ggplot. So before I had it as part of this geom map, and the reason is, is because eventually once we get down to making our next map, we're going to want these latitude and longitude available to all of our different geometries. So when you put it in ggplot2, this, um, this latitude and longitude will get funneled to map, and then it'll also get funneled to any other geometry. Um, okay, so let's check this out. We're just basically doing the same thing that we did for the world except now what we're doing is just highlighting the United States. And the, re and the way that that works is we now have USA Tibble in here, which is just the data for the United States. And you can see the projection looks correct. Now, if we did not include this coordinate map, um, if we just do from here down, you can see it'll look a little weird. So the projections look off. So you definitely want to have that chord map ortho and then put the orientation on the latitude and longitude that you're interested in. Okay, so now we can move on. Now that we understand the basics of how to plot maps, we're going to combine this with data and integrate data into our uh, visualization. Because what we've been doing is just visualizing the states, but we haven't ad actually added any data. And this is what you, you typically want to do. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create the Republican voting by U.S. state. And this is going to cover some key skills. I cover them in my 101 course. The first one is data wrangling with dplyr. I cover that in weeks two and three of my 101 course. And then there's also ggplot2. Uh, this is covered in depth in week four of my 101 course. So definitely take that course if you really want to understand how these plots are developed. Okay, the first thing that we need to do we need to take we need to get some data and what i'm going to be doing is using from the maps um, maps library i'm going to pull out this vote repub uh, which is every year from i believe uh, 1856 all the way up through all of the elections um, all the way to 90, 1976 they have a data set in here by state so what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to do some data wrangling. So it's not in the right format. Um, really what we want to do is we want to focus in on this 1976, which is the most recent data that this data set has. Um, so first thing I do is I convert it to a tibble. This tibble has some row names, so I need to uh, create a, a column called state. Next, what I'm doing is just selecting the 1976 column here and also the state column. So it kind of filters down the, um, the columns for me. Then I'm going to rename this column here uh, Republican Proportion. I do that. And then I'm going to convert this from um, units to a percentage or a proportion. Do that by dividing by 100. And then what I'm going to do is overwrite the state column and make it too lower because that's what I need in order to match these regions uh, when, we do, when we go to join. So I'm going to save this as Republican Voting Tibble. And then what I can do is I can take my USA Tibble which looks something like this. It's got a region column here with uh, all of the states in lowercase, and I can join it now on the state column because these are all lowercase, so they should match up. So we're gonna use this left join function. So again, I teach this all in my 101 course in weeks two and three. So now we have a US voting table where I've got the Republican proportion for each one of these rows in here, okay? 
So now what I can do is I can make what's called a choropleth map, which is just coloring each one of these states in by the proportion that they vote Republican. Um, we do this using kind of a similar process. Now I have a few additional options here that I've added in, uh, but the basics are the same. So I'm going to take my USA voting table. I'm going to use an AES of longitude and latitude for the X and Y axis. And I'm going to provide a group equal to the subregion, which is just this column right here. Okay. Um, control enter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my geom map with the map ID equal to region. And then we're going to do the orthogonal orientation so it looks correct. So this is just all stuff that we've already done. Um, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a geom polygon. And the AES is going to be group equal to group and fill equal to a Republican. Um, so this is going to take from this USA voting table, which looks something like this. And it's going to take in the group, which is this right here, this column. And it's going to fill based on this Republican column. So it's basically going to create a heat map. Uh, this color equal to black, we'll show, I'll show you what that does. So what I'd have is the outline for each one of these states uh, equal to black so I can see them. Now, this just gives you the standard color scheme, which goes from dark blue to light blue. And we want to change that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a function called skill fill to gradient two from low equal to blue. The middle, I want it to be white, and at the high end, I want it to be red. So anything down here is going to be blue, and blue is the color for Democrats. Uh, red, anything up here is going to be red, and that's going to be for uh, Republicans. And then in the middle, which is at the 50th percentile, um, that's going to be uh, white. So when I do this, control enter, I get something that looks like this. So it goes from dark blue to red, and you can see which states in 1976 were the most Republican or Democratic. Okay, next I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment, theme minimal, um, that gets rid of some of the lines and such. I'm going to add some labels, uh, so voting Republican in 1976, and then I'm going to adjust the theme. Um, I'm going to give, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and color it red, and then I'm going to uh, put the legend position at the bottom here. Okay, once I do that, my plot is done, and now I have a really cool voting Republican in 1976 plot that you can uh, you can definitely be proud of, and you can and this is publication quality. If you like this video, don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday Free R Tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here, and it'll send you here. Put your email address in, and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code, and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.